Welcome back to the Skid Factory. Today we're going to reassemble some cylinder heads onto this iron block 6 litre LQ4 engine. Before we begin, if you like turbo V8s, if you like VK Commodores, or if you like melted hull saws, click subscribe, hit like, and let us know in the comment section how many hull saws you have melted. We've got the engine ready to go. We've got our ARP head studs fitted. Al is applying some ARP grease to the nuts and also the washers. Our cylinder heads have been machined thanks to our mate John who helped us out with the 304 build. Thanks John, you're an absolute legend. We've also fixed up this um, manifold stud which Dave somehow destroyed. I've got no idea how he did that, but it's fixed now. Hand grenade. Hand grenade? Mm. Yeah. It was a big hole. That's all done now, so we're ready to just throw, throw the cylinder heads on, then we can put the engine back in the car, and we're back to kind of square one, I suppose, where... Then we can get to the good stuff. Back to the fitting some GX... Turbos and intercools. 3582 Gen 2s onto the car. It's going to be a good time. Let's do it. Let's get it done. With the cylinder heads fitted, Al tightens the head studs in three stages. The push rods and rocker assembly are then installed and also tightened to spec. The engine's ready to go back in the car. Um, we have changed the sump as well. It's got a um, Holden proper aluminium GM sump on it now instead of that fabricated thing. One other mod that we did to the cylinder heads while John was um, machining them was I've um, tapped out all the steam ports to 1 8 NPT. Um, this, well, you can buy little steam port adapters that convert to um, either NPT or dash um, four but they cost money and running a tap through it doesn't. So um, we've done that to all of them. Uh, in the high horsepower LS stuff, it is a good idea to, to utilize the steam ports because they can get hot spots in them and causes issues with them. That may have been what happened to this, we don't know. Or it could have been just that the heads weren't, weren't talked correctly, but it um, should be good now. We've got them all talked up to spec and checked everything over and everything should be good. So. Tomorrow we'll throw those manifolds on and mock everything up and start ordering tons of AN fittings and plumb it all up. Can't we reuse some of the old stuff? No, because it didn't have any. Because it was a Borg Warner and only has in and out. Right, yeah. And these have got lots of ins and outs. So they will just have to get his uh, corporate stooge credit card out and order some more stuff. He's good at ordering stuff. He is. So are you. You're, make, you're good at making orders. At ordering the right stuff. No, like, hey Dave, you should put some twin turbos on your drag car. That sounds like a reasonable expectation to me. Doesn't it? Yeah, kinda. I think it's reasonable. Thank <laughs> you. 
about ready to bolt up the exhaust manifolds. These were made by uh, our mate Chris. Um, he actually CAD designed them, or a program of some description, not necessarily AutoCAD. Um, he came out to Dave's place in Brisbane and measured up the engine bay and sort of designed it virtually and then um, had everything cut out. He's got these sort of profiled um, collectors there that's not, um, normally if you buy this sort of collector, they're, they're just linear, but he's made them so they, so it's more appropriate for the, for the shape. You can see they're all different. So I'm pretty impressed by that, the way that Chris does it. He's not a professional fabricator or anything, he's, but he does this for fun, which is cool. So um, I was really keen to, to let him have a crack at it, um, save me some work and also to show the process. So we've got some, some cutaways of that sort of, of him doing that and some uh, pictures of the, the, um, the design process. So I've just given them a skim off. They've been ceramic coated, they're stainless steel. Um, I've just given them the face a flatten out um, to make sure it gets good sealing on the linisher so it's all good to go and I bolt them up now and then we can start throwing turbos on and see how good it looks. On this side of the engine we've gone with uh, three studs and three bolts because with six studs in I can't actually get the manifold in without lifting the engine which is a bit of a pain. Uh, doesn't really matter, the studs are probably a bit better idea, but they come with bolts factory and they seem to work okay, so uh, the other side's fine. The engines are actually mounted further over to this way um, with the mount kits that they do for these because normally they have their NA and they have extractors and the steering racks sort of in the way over the other side, so they, they sort of buy some this side to try and give them a bit more space to get around the steering rack. Um, you don't need that when it's got turbos on it, but it's already mounted, so we're not going to change it. So the other side will go on fine with six studs. So we'll work it on as well. started working on the intercooler install yesterday. Um, I didn't film any of it, which I should have, so um, I'm going over it now. Uh, we've, I cut the front of the car right out because the front of a Commodore is just ridiculous. It's got this stupid sort of cradle thing that holds the radiator in, but also half blocks it off. And it's just, um, it's just very impractical for actually fitting a decent size radiator in as well, because they have to be quite narrow. Um, so I had a good look at it and then decided that there was no reason for any of it to be there and just cut it out. Um, this is a drag car, it's not a registered vehicle, so it doesn't really matter. But even then, th there's no reason why you couldn't do it to a, a road going car. You, it's not structural or anything like that. Um, it's just basically a bit of tin that's been badly spot welded on there. So it didn't take much time to get it off at all. <coughs> Gave us a lot more room, um, allowed this, this um, BMW radiator to fit in there. Um, so before I did any more work on the engine, I needed to uh, mount the intercooler because we need to know where everything's going to sit. So uh, I got into that yesterday. First thing I did was mount the radiator to the intercooler itself because these radiators don't really have mounts. They, um, they actually couple to, a, to an intercooler which sits underneath them in the factory set up in, in a BMW diesel. Um, so there's nothing, really, there's nothing to mount it on. So, the Plasma Man cooler came with um, bosses here, which are for the purpose of mounting however, however way you want to do it. Um, so I've used them to actually mount the radiator. I just went to the hardware shop and bought some 20 mil um, box aluminium for five bucks and chopped it up and sort of tapered it off so you can screw it on and just welded it all on there. 
the core of this is actually exactly the same size as the core of the intercooler, which is ideal because everything's travelling through. There's no sort of tank in the way blocking the airflow or anything like that. So it actually fits really nice. I'm pretty happy with with the the um, sort of the way it couples together. Um, this is similar to the one that we that Matt used on his um, LS1 twin turbo Skyline. Uh, it's not the same one. I think it's a bit bigger actually. I just went through the book and found it and went, yeah, okay, I can fit that if I chop some stuff out of the car. So um, it fits pretty nice. The, it's got these weird clip-on things on it, um, late model car stuff. Uh, I'm basically just going to weld AN fittings onto that because it's all it's all like dash 12 and 16 AN for the radiator hoses. So dash 16 there, dash 12 there, dash 12 there. Um, that'll take care of that. Um, and then there might be a, f a few more bits and pieces for um, bleeders from the head. I'm going to run bleeders out of every head port, uh, out of the the um, steam ports that LS engines have. Um, the back ones are usually blocked off, but we think it's probably a better idea in this application to, to get to make sure the whole cooling system's working properly, since it's going to be making a lot of power. So it's just going to have um, dash three and four bleeders coming back to either the radiator or I might actually put an expansion tank in there because this doesn't actually have a filler on it, so we'll have to add one, either add one to it or put an external expansion tank somewhere else, but I'll work that out once we figure out how much space we've got and where it is. So once that's all mounted up, I then just held it up in the car and um, put it on my motorbike stand and held it up in the car and just sort of, I, I didn't actually know how I was going to mount the intercooler because it's there's not much in the way of mounting points on, in this particular vehicle. Uh, eventually I worked out that the best way to do it would be to come down through the top of the radiator support panel at the top into some aluminium bosses. So I got on the lathe and um, just cut some inch or cut them off on the, the um, cutoff saw and put them in the lathe, drilled and tapped them. They've got a 7.5 degree angle to suit this. Held it all up in there, drilled the holes, screwed them on, marked them, welded them on. It fits great, so I'm happy. Um, the bottom mounting I haven't done yet. While I was there, I welded on these um, Golby uh, clamps. Uh, these aren't a Wiggins clamp, they're a male-female type clamp, so a Wiggins clamp's got two males, so it would have two of these, and then it's got a sleeve over the top, so it's a different design. Um, these ones are a machined male with two O-rings, and then a machined female that clips over the top, and then a clamp. So it's just it's a different way of doing it. Um, the Wiggins stuff, Wiggins style clamps are more expensive because the actual sleeve is is um, it's I think it's made out of titanium or something. It's expensive anyway, so this is a cheaper way of doing it and obviously very effective. Got one on each end for the inputs as well, for the two and a half inch from the turbos. Um, so it's ready to go in. I'm gonna bolt it in now and then work out the lower mount. This is my tack together lower bar. Uh, it's a uh, 40 mil, 40 nominal board pipe because I had it lying around and it's appropriate sized. These plates are just cut out of six mil mild steel. Um, I'm gonna put some gussets through here just to give it a little bit extra. There's a little bit of room there around the radiator um, and finish welding it up. <clears throat> then we'll bolt it back on and work out our mounting point. Um, I probably should put some shoes on. I'm sort of dressed for motorbike riding at the moment because that's what I'm doing this afternoon. You may notice my 10 MZ shirt. This is MZ, the Sultan of Send from the MV DBR videos. Josh, Nat and MZ team up and make some really good motorbike videos. So if you like watching people go nuts in the, in the forest, then um, get onto it. He has weekly content does a real good job.
You can see the bar in place, it fits really neat underneath the radiator. It's a bit tight in here. The bumper bar brackets will just go on the outside of that. There's big slots in the bumper bar itself for um, manufacturing intolerances, which I'm sure this car had a lot of. Uh, mounting wise, uh, because I've solid mounted it at the top by those pins, I think I'll put rubber pads at the bottom because in a car like this that is going to have in excess of a thousand horsepower, I'd imagine, um, with a trans brake doing sort of wheel stands off the line, there's going to be a lot of body twist. And if you solid mount top and bottom, the intercooler will possibly suffer getting pulled around from the, the chassis twist. So if you just leave it mounted solid on one end and soft on the bottom, that will avoid that sort of stuff you gotta think about. It's actually a thing in a road car as well, especially with four-wheel drive, where they're sort of flexing through, you know, you know like a real four-wheel drive that's going up Cruiser Park or up the Gulf or whatever, that you can get a lot of, uh, a lot of movement in the body and chassis. So that's why everything's rubber mounted in road cars to stop it ripping the core apart. We don't want to wreck this magnificent intercooler uh, supplied by our friends at Golby's, as usual. Big plasma man dealer and also great supporter of the show. I've had enough fabricating for the week, so I am going to ditch my dirty shoes and put some motorbike boots on and head out into the forestry for a bit of a ride and I'm quite looking forward to that. I'm pretty happy with the progress on the VK, bit of work. It looks like it's getting somewhere now so um, we can move on to a lot more stuff, a lot of plumbing, intercooler piping, that sort of thing. So I'm pleased that we've got this far with it. Gives you a bit of motivation to keep going. We'll move on to that stuff next week. Thanks for watching. You camera guy. What? What else have we got to do to it? I don't know. I'm just the camera guy, remember? Oh, that's true. You know something else that I've noticed? What's that? Well, something that I noticed beforehand and the YouTube comments pointed out was that Dave's radials are on backwards. And after I quizzed him, apparently he's done that on purpose just for just so people would notice it in the YouTube comments. I was going to say, if I know Dave, it's just him being a troll. Yeah, it is. I can hear him giggling like a schoolgirl right now over it. <laughs>